Good afternoon and welcome to our Maximizing the Fairfield Experience Parent Guardian webinar. My name is Marissa Lashinsky and I'm one of the Associate Directors in the Office of Student Engagement. Hi everyone, my name is Meredith Smith and I'm another Associate Director in the Office of Residence Life. I work specifically with our living and learning communities. Yes, my name is PJ Lucky. I'm another Associate Director in Residence Life and I work specifically with our RAs and our CPAs, which are our Residence Assistants and our Community Repair Assistants. Great, we're really excited that you're here. <laughs> um, so we'll so we are going to spend some time today just reviewing some um, of the things that your students have inter interacted with and covered um, in their first semester at Fairfield so far. We're going to review our Jesuit tradition and how it ties into really maximizing your experience. Um, and we will talk about opportunities for students to get engaged and involved beyond what they're currently doing so that they make the most out of their time at Fairfield. So. So our Jesuit tradition. So there are four Jesuit values that, that we hold very near and dear to our community, which is the Magis, Cur Personalis, Men and Women for Others, and Reflection. But the two that I would like to highlight today are the Magis and Cur Personalis. Uh, Magis in Latin means more. So we strongly encourage our students to do the more, to do the better, to do greater. But when we say more, we don't mean more as in doing more things. But we mean enhancing who they are and enhancing what they're already involved in. So we strongly encourage our students to enhance who they are and get involved and learn more about themselves and, you know, and, and contribute in a greater way. And then it's Cura Personalis. Cura Personalis in Latin means care for the whole person. Um, so we strongly encourage our, our students to really make sure that they're doing some self-care. Um, but with that self-care, that they're learning about who they are, but they're also learning how to care for the community, and we strongly believe that through different leadership opportunities, our students can truly enhance who they are. So the first year experience at Fairfield is something that students engage with during their first semester. Um, and it really ties into the June orientation experience as well. So as soon as, soon as students join us um, as part of the Fairfield community, we want them to really learn how to connect with each other, um, with fellow students, with faculty, with staff, with campus partners. Uh, we want them to be inspired to do greatness um, and kind of um, uphold the Jesuit values that PJ was referencing before. And we really want them to thrive throughout their time at Fairfield and beyond. Um, so the first year experience program consists of four different components. Um, we have a lot of opportunities for students to engage, again, with each other and with the community. Um, we really want them to develop that sense of belonging through a sense of community at Fairfield. We really want them to reflect on their experiences, their past, present, and what they want their future to look like. And we want to instill within them the Jesuit education. So this semester, um, we've covered a variety of topics in first year experience. And the week after Thanksgiving is actually their last meeting session. So they've had about 12 classes mm -hmm. so far, and they've had a really good time. They've talked about a variety of topics from cultural and social navigation to academic navigation, so how to interact with professors, how to stay on top of their schoolwork, um, emotional navigation, so how to develop resiliency and self-advocacy. Um, we've also discussed some of the big topics that a lot of college students face on campus, like alcohol awareness and the hookup culture. Um, we've had our third installment of Step Up Stags, which they started in June orientation and then again at Fall Welcome, which is our bystander intervention training, where we partner with the Center for Family Justice. Um, they've had difficult dialogues and talked about social identity. So how do you have discussions uh, that are respectful, but you also um, acknowledge a variety of perspectives? We also prepared them for their course registration, which they did this week. So we had some academic advising sessions. We gave them pointers on how to use the registration system and how to talk to their advisors about what classes are best for their academic exploration and career goals. Um, and then this week, we covered My Fairfield Future, which is kind of what we're talking about right now. Um, and again, exploring the possibilities so that they can um, really make the most out of their time at Fairfield. Awesome. So I think both PJ and Marissa set such a beautiful context for what we're talking about today and really encouraging our students to maximize their Fairfield experience. Um, something that we did want to share is there's a lot of research out in the world actually on student engagement and student involvement. And um, these two um, 
researchers in particular, George Koo, um, my higher education friends, he's a huge researcher on high impact practices. And it's really important that our students, as they're transitioning, um, find those educationally purposeful activities outside of the classroom that will really enhance um, their learning and their positive experience at Fairfield. So some of the things we're gonna be covering today um, as a team will really uh, touch upon um, some great opportunities for them to find those activities that'll help them make the most of their Fairfield experience. Another key um, just piece of research is that, um, is our friend Alexander Aston um, of the Higher Education Research Institute out at UCLA, and really talks about students finding at least one meaningful activity. I know me and my colleagues, we're gonna cover several opportunities today, um, by no means an exhaustive list, but we are also a great starting place for students if they're looking for that one meaningful activity at least one. We wouldn't recommend too many, though. Um, but that helps them connect what they're doing in the classroom, outside of the classroom, but also connects them socially. And we also we say developmentally, but at Fairfield we say in terms of their formation as students and as um, community members. So this is the Transition W. We review this with students during their first week of the first year experience. Um, and we like to bring it up often to remind them that transition is a journey. Um, it's not just one thing and you're done. Um, it ebbs and flows. There's peaks and valleys. Um, and so we reference the Transition W a lot. Your student might be currently in a valley because they're really stressed out about the courses they did or did not get into for next semester. Or they might be at a peak because they found their friend group and really feel connected to Fairfield. Um, maybe after Thanksgiving, they're back down in a valley because they're starting to miss home a little bit more because they had a little bit more of a taste. They saw their friends who attend other institutions. Um, or they're coming back at a high because they only have a week and a half left of the semester and they're excited for what's ahead. Um, so if your student kind of ebbs and flows, that's completely normal. Normal, and we want to remind them of that as well is that if you are having a difficult time right now there's always going to be greater things ahead you just have to push through be resilient and kind of work and utilize your resources to get there awesome so before we launch into our sophomore year experience it's important that students get involved in any number of programs activities clubs and organizations so we just want to highlight some spring semester opportunities we encourage students to get involved in our student government our resident hall association, and actually in each resident hall community, they'll be hosting different meetings that talk about involvement and how they can get involved, specifically in FUSA, which is our student government association, and IRHA, which is our resident hall association. But again, there's definitely a plenty of clubs and organizations that they can definitely get in contact with um, through, our, through OSE, which is our Office of Student Engagement. Um, we also have FAN, which is our Fearful at Night, which hosts a bunch of different programs on the weekends that, uh, that our students love to go to. Um, specifically, they love bingo. I'll highlight that program. <laughs> um, and then RA programming. Uh, every RA, they're, 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 they have to do at least three programs a month um, within their residence hall. So there's a lot of things going on. Definitely club sports, intramurals, and fitness classes will be going on. Athletics. Uh, we have some great sports. Uh, again, we encourage our students to, to really get involved and enjoy the Fairfield experience. Uh, and definitely when it comes to some faith-based opportunities, there's some service trips going on. Uh, and we have four different chaplains that are hosting different programs all across campus. We just strongly encourage students to truly get involved in these different uh, programs and opportunities. So, yeah. awesome. Great. So we're going to launch into some of the sophomore experience mm -hmm. um, and some opportunities there. And it may seem early, like our students are still transitioning, but uh, we want to make sure that um, they get a head start on thinking about their future and their potential. So uh, one opportunity that I have the privilege of working with and two of my colleagues have had involvement with are our sophomore residential colleges. Um, the sophomore residential college application is live. It's um, at fairfield.edu slash rescolleges. There's also a really great two minute and 42 second video to give students an overview of what the res college experience is. It's open to all our students, including commuter students, but it's really a great opportunity to students to integrate all their aspects of their student lives in one experience. And our tagline for this year is for them to explore their extraordinary potential 
At Fairfield, we believe every student has incredible potential. And the whole purpose of the sophomore residential college is so that they can, in a way, major in themselves, but also find ways that their academic and their living experiences are tying together with who they want to become in the future. The residential college program has three fundamental questions that students take the entire year to explore. It starts with who am I, whose am I, and the third question relates to the specific community that, that they're in. We have three wonderful residential colleges, Creative Life, Ignatian Leadership, and Service for Justice. All of these communities are based in our Jesuit tradition. Um, our early Jesuits were very innovative and imaginative, and creative life comes from that tradition. Our early Jesuits were incredible leaders, and you see that in our Jesuit tradition at Fairfield University. And then our, our Jesuits, a hallmark of a Jesuit education is social justice, and that is the Service for Justice Residential College. So um, we really encourage students to apply for all three. Um, the application is not very long. It's about five or six questions. We're looking for quality over quantity. And again, we recognize students still are transitioning. And when we select these students for this program, uh, we look for students who need this program, but also students who are excited. There are some commitments with this um, activity. There are is a, a semester retreat, a, a day retreat in the fall, and an overnight in the spring. And these are really personal development and community development retreats. Um, the students also are paired with a mentor, which both my colleagues have served as mentors. We also have community members, lawyers, doctors, business leaders, who um, join us on campus to mentor a group of four to six student, uh, six to eight students rather, um, once a month uh, as and accompany these students on their journey and then these students they take a class that they would normally take but that class is geared towards their residential college experience so some students I was talking to some students yesterday at the Fairfield Future Fair and they're like oh I have to take an extra class and I'm like no 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 not extra this class is a um, Magis core class that you would normally take However, it's with a faculty member who really wants to teach sophomore students and is excited about your role in the residential college. Um, and we also train an incredible staff of resident assistants who have also been through the residential college experience. So it's a great opportunity. It's meant to fit into a student's life and um, we encourage all sophomores to apply for it. Typically about half of the class ends up participating in the sophomore residential college program. Um, if your student is really, they're struggling to find their group of friends, struggling to find their niche, this is a great opportunity for students um, to make friends. We see that one of our big outcomes from the sophomore residential college program is that students who are struggling to make friends, they find their community. They find um, people who are excited to meet other people. Um, and again, so much of this program is focused on community and how um, students support each other as well. So again, I can't say enough, happy to answer any questions about sophomore res colleges. So I'll turn it over. Some students are already at the point where they're craving those leadership opportunities mm -hmm. um, that they may have had a similar role in high school, or they're just looking to really give back to the Fairfield community because they've taken so much already. Um, so one of those essential critical leadership roles that we really want to encourage students to consider is the new student leader position. Um, students, New student leaders are those folks that were in the polos during orientation, they were helping with parking, they were greeting students and families alike. Um, they were accompanying the students throughout the overnight journey. Uh, they were also helping with move-in at fall welcome. And then they are um, essential for our first year experience program because they coordinate the um, first year experience seminar that's every week with, they co-facilitate it with a community associate, which is a staff member or a faculty member at Fairfield. Um, the new student leader position um, is great for those who want to find a community if they don't already have one, um, but those who also want to learn leadership skills and really help mentor first year students during their transition to college. We have a couple different types of new student leader positions. The one that I'm referring to that teaches that first year experience seminar is um, titled a new student leader. So they are, um, they get hired in the spring semester, they go through training in the spring and during the summer, they help facilitate June orientation with those orientation groups. Um, they continue on with those orientation groups at fall welcome and then usually the majority of the students that they have in June are also in their seminar class in the fall. 
Uh, we also have students who have those same roles or responsibilities, but then they have more of a focus to support our international population. Uh, so those are our international new student leaders. Same training, but they also have additional um, cultural competence competencies and they help facilitate the international um, student orientation, which is in the fall. Uh, transfer new student leaders, uh, transfer students we know have similar transitional um, struggles that they go through when they are entering a new campus, but they do have unique um, adjustment processes as well because they've already done the college thing for at least a semester before, and now it's really about acclimating them to their new institution. Uh, so our transfer new student leaders tend to be transfer students themselves so that they can relate to their students. We do have a transfer, a couple transfer specific sections of the first year experience program that happen in the fall and in the spring. Um, and the topics are slightly adjusted to meet those transfer student needs. Lastly, we have logistical new student leaders. Those are amazing individuals who help us during the summer. Uh, they do not teach the first year experience class in the fall, but they're the ones who are doing all those behind the scenes, things that need to get done in order to put on large scale programs like June orientation. So they are making signs, they are putting things around campus, they're stuffing all of the swag bags that we give out to mm -hmm. students and their family members. Basically anything that we need, a logistical new student leader is gonna be at the ready to, uh, ready to go and help support that process. So if a student doesn't necessarily think that they would be comfortable facilitating a first year experience class or don't want a commitment that's gonna go into the school year but want to still give back and have a developmental opportunity during the summer, I would recommend that they apply for the logistical new student leader position. So now we're gonna talk about the timeline of the application. So the application went live yesterday in time for our My Fairfield Future Fair. It is um, live until February 3rd, so it is due then, so they have a couple months to complete it. Um, they can find the, students can find the application on Life at Fairfield, which is our engagement portal online, um, and it will be on the actual engagement page in Life at Fairfield. Uh, we do have an interview process, so we conduct that um, in the spring semester before decisions are made. So that's this year gonna, going to be between February 10th and 21st. And notifications of offers will go out prior to spring break. So then students can talk to their families during spring break whether or not they want to accept the opportunity that they were offered um, and come back in the rest of the spring semester for training. Awesome. So another leadership position that's definitely available for this sophomore year uh, is the RA, excuse me, the resident assistant position or the commuter peer assistant, which we say short for it, we say RA and CPA. Uh, when it comes to the RA position, our RA is responsible for social, academic, personal, um, just really holistic development of our undergraduate students. Um, they're consistently hosting different programs and different opportunities to truly enhance our students. Uh, with that said, those RAs are gaining some great leadership skills. Uh, they're learning time management, critical thinking, communication, decision making. Excuse me, decision making. Um, there's three things when we are hosting RA training that we really focus on. We want to make sure that every RA or CPA leaves with leading self, leading team, and leading community because we believe that as they enhance who they are, they definitely can enhance others. Um, so again, our RAs are definitely doing community development. We have ongoing professional development when it comes to our once a month. We ensure that our RAs are doing different trainings to truly enhance their job and enhance who they are, not just when it comes to RA position, but just as an individual, and to really prepare them for life after Fairfield. Uh, when it comes to the RA role or the CPA role, they're really gaining lifelong friendships, uh, and that's with their staff members, as well as with their residents or with uh, the different commuters that may enter into their lounge. So we truly encourage uh, RAs and CPAs to, to, to really learn and just really, you know, be in the experience and, and take away what they can from it. Um, and there's definitely a competitive compensation package when it comes to those different roles. Uh, when it comes to the RA role, uh, there's definitely room and board that comes with it and a small stipend, as well as when it comes to the CPA role, uh, there's definitely a stipend uh, associated with that. Uh, the RA position, uh, the application launched last Friday, November 15th, and it's currently open. Uh, you any student can definitely go on uh, Life at Fairfield, we have an RA selection portal um, that they can go into and apply for the position. Applications are due January 24th. Um, and then along with the application process, there is a group project. Um, they'll be assigned to that group after they submit their application. Um, and then we have an interview day, February 15th, 2020. So we strongly encourage sophomores that are interested, uh, that may not want to go into our risk colleges, or that may go into our risk colleges, to apply for, for, yeah, apply for both. Yes. 
um, it's a great opportunity uh, for leadership development. Awesome. And just to tag on before we go to Interfaith Peer Leader, um, we find that it's important for students, they can apply for multiple things. Mm -hmm. um, the Res College application, we have RAs who are sophomores mm -hmm. who are participating in the Res College program. So we encourage students to, again, apply for both um, or multiple positions. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really important because typically with new student leader and with resident assistant, we tend to hire more juniors and seniors, but we do feel like there is a learning piece of going through the application process. I know many of our junior and senior applicants um, applied as sophomores and it was great experience. And they now know, like we do give them feedback on their interview skills and um, it's just, it's, it's good to try. It's good to make that attempt. So um, I just, just a little plug there for applying, applying for things and putting one's name out there. Um, so just another leadership position that I have the pleasure of co-supervising with my colleagues in campus ministry and the Center for Faith in Public Life. We have this great group of students called the Interfaith Peer Leaders. Um, and they, uh, like the RA and like the new student leader, are embedded with the first year class. But their role is to really promote um, discussion and dialogue around difference, specifically faith, spirituality, and religious difference. Um, again, one of the key pieces of the Jesuits are that they're constantly in conversation. Uh, we are a Jesuit and Catholic institution, but we welcome all students from all faiths and religious backgrounds. And it's important to talk about uh, things that are really core to our own identities with each other and build comfort around that. So um, these great student leaders, uh, we do a weekly meeting with them um, and, and promote their inter, we call it like interfaith literacy and their development, um, but they also do events with the RAs, the resident assistants and commuter peer assistants on a monthly basis to really encourage like conversation around these difficult topics. Um, so their application will open on December 1 on Life at Fairfield and will close March 3rd. So a little bit longer of a timeline for that piece. Um, it's a small team, but it's a great team. Um, and it's, it's, it's students, we don't expect any student to step into this role and be like, oh, ready to rock and roll as a leader. All of us see leadership as a process. So we take time to really develop students into leadership roles and, and develop their leadership skills. So again, if this is something that's interesting, again, we welcome students from all faith backgrounds and phil philosophical backgrounds, wow, words are a little hard, um, to this, or even questioning. They don't have to be from a specific faith tradition. So uh, it's just a fun role too. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And another opportunity is our care team. Our care team is our community advocate and relationship educators. Uh, they're based out of the Office of Student Diversity and Multicultural Affairs. Um, the goal of the care team is to cultivate healthy and authentic relationships, um, to, to explore commonalities and differences. Uh, one thing I must say is our care team leaders look to develop consciousness around social justice. Um, they facilitate different dialogues within different residence halls to truly make sure that they're educating our students when it comes to inclusivity as well as diversity. Uh, so it's a great opportunity for students to learn um, and gain the skills on how to facilitate. And we actually do some training together when it comes to our care team and our RAs at different times. So again, it's just a great opportunity for students to, to gain another way of leadership on our campus. Mm -hmm. And just to, before we move on, mm -hmm. to add on to that, no, you can leave it oh, on this gotcha. next slide. <laughs> um, all of these opportunities, all of these student leaders that we're talking about do do programming and do do yes. events. So again, if students are interested, we encourage them to like go, go to an info session, go to a care team dialogue, mm -hmm. um, you know, go to their residence hall association meeting. Um, students don't have to commit they can get to know what happens. Mm -hmm. And I know Care Team offers dialogues in the spring mm -hmm. as well. Um, just another quick uh, plug uh, for our colleagues in campus ministry and the Center for Faith and Public Life. We're in great service, um, learning opportunities, and um, whether it's service in our local community or what we call amazing, quote, breaks, domestic service trips during spring break. There are also international immersion trips as well. Um, there are great opportunities for students to start thinking about 
for spring, but also thinking about their sophomore year. Um, there are some incredible service learning classes. So they're taking a class and serving as a service learning associate out of the Center for Faith and Public Life. We really encourage students to start to engage in service. This is more than just simply volunteering or simply um, being philanthropic, those are very important things, but actually engaging in the act of service is really important to encourage students in their own reflection and development. So again, a plug for service and immersion. All these opportunities are listed on our student engagement platform, Life at Fairfields, and if they have any questions, um, we encourage them to reach out to the Center for Faith and Public Life and uh, campus ministry, but if they don't know how to reach them, they can reach out to us and we'll get them in touch with them. Awesome. Great. Well, thank you. So we just took a couple minutes to talk about some of the major um, student leadership opportunities that we're aware of and that and what we're most familiar with yeah. from our positions in our offices, um, but there are plenty more out there. And even if a student doesn't want a specific role for a student leadership position, there's definitely ways that they can get involved with um, more in depth with things that they're already engaging with on campus. So if they're already in a club and organization, they can try to be an officer. So take on that leadership role and kind of stay within their comfortable setting, but take another step forward. Again, Magis, strive for mm -hmm. excellence, do the more. Um, they can also look at things that are happening, just kind of one-off things. So they don't necessarily need to do a year-long commitment or um, something that they are doing on a weekly basis. Um, so a reminder is that we have a lot of our op, um, leadership position opportunities, involvement opportunities, club and organization events information that's all in life at Fairfield. Students are engaging with that right now because that's how they track and find first year experience events um, and that's how they fill out some forms. So applications are on there for a lot of these positions. Um, we also want to encourage students to engage with career building and professional development while they're at Fairfield, and it's never too early to start doing that. So now's a great time for them to meet with their career advisors. Um, every academic school or college does have career um, advisors and career centers associated with those majors and programs, so they should go to um, their center, and then we also have a uh, central Career Center that is in the Kelly Center, and they oversee the larger scale programs like the career fairs that we have and resume building workshops and interview workshops and things like that. So for a lot of these positions that we talked about, students are asked to submit resumes and cover letters and references. So it's great to have someone have eyes on that. And if they haven't had one developed at all, it's a great place to start for them to develop those skills. Um, students are also encouraged to talk to their peer resources. Um, so if they have questions about what the resident assistant program looks like, if they have a question about what a CPA position looks like, go and talk to those people that you mm -hmm. know currently are in the position. Um, same thing with new student leaders. New student leaders are resources throughout the whole year, even though they only um, facilitate the first year experience seminar during the fall semester, but they're still around on campus. They're not going anywhere. So we want students to keep reaching out, keep engaging with their fellow students and then also the staff that's in all offices across campus. So we are now moving on to our question and answer yeah, portion of the absolutely. webinar. Um, if you have any questions that you would like answered live on camera, uh, please enter it into the chat box of the YouTube video right now. Um, we're just checking the laptop right now. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Does Do any of my fellow presenters have any questions for each other that mm. we haven't addressed yet? Great question. Yeah. I know we went over <laughs> a lot of information mm -hmm. um, at once. Again, we the, a lot of this information was shared with your student in their mm -hmm. My Fairfield yeah. Future FYE class. I know I'm teaching mine this mm -hmm. afternoon, so I'll make sure I cover yeah. everything. Mm -hmm. um, but Life at Fairfield is a really great resource online, virtually, for students to find things. Um, yeah, yep. so that's important. Yep, and students should also check their Fairfield email accounts mm -hmm. um, because they're probably hearing from their area coordinators or from their new student leaders or community associates with more information about all the programs that we just talked about. Um, you are more than welcome to contact either of our offices mm -hmm. if you Good. do have any questions about anything we talked about today and our contact information is on the screen right now. Um, so Office of Residence Life, we share a physical office in yeah. the Barone Campus Center. Neighbors. So <laughs> pretty easy email addresses, residencelife at fairfield.edu mm -hmm. and engagement at fairfield.edu. Um, 
Thank you for joining us yeah. today. We do want to promote our next webinar, which is January 6th. Um, that will happen at noon, so that's a Monday. That is the week before spring semester classes begin and um, representatives from the Office of Residence Life will be talking about the housing lottery process which is something that a lot of students want to know about because mm -hmm. it impacts their time at Fairfield. Yeah. Um, great well thank you for joining us today have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Okay. Thank Happy Thanksgiving. you. Thanksgiving.